Good morning, Mr. O'Casey. Who says? Your paper was on the front lawn. Every morning, that guy. Well, good morning, Charlie. Good morning. Say, I'm going to have to skip breakfast this morning. I overslept, and I'm due out at the airport right about now. To work on that round-the-world plane? Yeah, that's right. We want to meet the pilot for the first time. Just some toast and coffee, so I didn't get up for nothing. Oh, now, Charlie, don't you worry about me. I won't starve. There's a cafe open out of the airport. Show me a man that's cheerful this early in the morning, and I'll show you a man still in bed sleepy. <laughs> I'll see you, Charlie. Pardon me, I'm looking for Trudy Bennett. Where can I find her? You just did. Oh. Uh, you does it? Yes. Yes, uh, she does. Oh, how do you do? Hello. So this is the ladybug, huh? Yeah. So far, a great plane for medium distance flights. Now, the question is, how can we convert it to carry enough fuel for a longer hop on a record-breaking round-the-world flight? Joe Walters told me if anybody could do it for you. Yeah, well, I've uh, read the builder specifications. I think it can be done. Fine. I uh, hope you don't mind working long hours, Douglas. The weatherman says I have to be airborne on the 18th, so that doesn't give us too much time. The 18th, huh? Eh? Yeah. Well, this is my assignment. I'll just have to stick with it, that's all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I know how much a flight like this can mean to a pilot. I'm glad you said that, Douglas. Because the last engineer I had in my Pacific hop had a hard time thinking of me as anything but a woman. Huh? Well, I can understand where you might have a difficulty. Well, <laughs> <laughs> here's to the lady part, huh? Yeah. Hey, there's a story on Trudy Bennett. Come on, look at the picture. Hey, she's something else for a woman her age. Jim, can I come in? Yeah, come in. Huh? Hi, Ernie. Hi, Hi Ernie. My dad's fixing up that plane for the lady flag so she can go around the world. What she want to do that for? Who knows? What are you looking at me for? My head on backwards or something? <laughs> I was wondering if it was you. It's me. I mean in the painting. What painting? The one in the window of the gallery. We passed on the way to the dentist. Any cavities? All over the place. <laughs> Wait a minute. What about this painting? It's your portrait, Mr. O'Casey. Only it doesn't have your name on it. Just the title, The Mean Old Grouch. Well, that couldn't be me. <laughs> anyway, I never posed for any painting. Maybe I have a twin brother who was kidnapped by the gypsies. And then the painting was even wearing the same bathrobe you're wearing right now. So what? Lots of men have the same bathrobe. Well, the same torn pocket? It look just like me. Well, that must be a coincidence. You mean somebody else could have a kisser like mine? Well... Uh... What about the bathrobe with the torn pocket? That's no coincidence. Well, Charlie, why don't you go in and ask Mr. Eames? I can't do that. It would be like Whistler's mother going in to ask, who's that lady in the rocking chair? <laughs> Somehow I gotta find out the name of the artist so I can belt them one right in the chops. Well, uh, I'll see you, Charlie. Well, have a good time. Well, this is strictly a business dinner. <laughs> I can't remember a time when I didn't want to be a pilot. Hey, did I tell you that my father was a barnstorming pilot? No, but I, uh, I read it in one of your newspaper interviews. It's a funny thing, but the only time I can really be myself is when I'm up in the air, racing, testing new planes, exhibition flying. If it's got wings, I want to take it up. I guess the psychiatrist would really make something out of that one, wouldn't he? Well, if you uh, break the round the world records, you'll have your name in the books with the best of them. Yeah. Perhaps one day I'll wake up and wonder if the whole world has passed me by while I've been so busy breaking records. But for now. Yeah, but for now, we'd better worry about lightening the ladybug another 200 pounds. You know, Douglas, maybe we shouldn't have met for the first time outside of a dirty old hangar. Maybe we should have met at a cocktail party near a couple of martinis. I think it's better this way. No matter how I redesign an olive, you'd never get it off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Well, let's see here. Come on. Look. Look. There it is. <laughs> now listen, you guys. Play it cool. Tell him you're interested in buying the picture. What with? I haven't got my allowance yet. Jim, we're just making believe. I don't care much for the neo-realistic school myself. Neo-realistic? <laughs> ah, for Pete's sake. Come on, come on. Good afternoon. Is there something I can do for you? Well, yes, sir. We were kind of interested in buying a painting. A birthday present for his uncle. Yeah, he doesn't want any more ties. <laughs> Which painting did you have in mind? Well, the, uh, the one in the window. Uh, man in the bathrobe taking in the milk bottles. Oh, the mean old grouch. I'll get it out. <laughs> Just find out who painted it and where I can get my hands on the feet. <laughs> Here we are. Um, who is he? Oh, it's a sort of composite of all the mean old characters in the world. <laughs> it's actually not bad. For a primitive. <laughs> Uh, what about the painter? Who is he? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know. His wife brought the painting in and wouldn't leave her name. She said she didn't want her husband to find out. He's very retiring. Didn't even sign the painting. I thought it, uh, quite interesting. For a primitive. <laughs> so I took it on special consignment. I'm not sure my uncle would like a picture called the mean old grouch, because he isn't. <laughs> yeah. How come the artist named it that, anyway? The artist left it untitled. Actually, I'm the one who labeled it the mean old grouch. <laughs> Just look at those beady little eyes. Just a minute. <laughs> Whose beady little eyes are you calling beady little eyes? <laughs> Why, it's you. Yeah, it sure is. And you better find out who painted it and where I can get my hands on them. And keep it out of your window. <laughs> mean old crowd. <laughs> Oh, Douglas, you're wonderful since you streamlined her. She flies like a dream. Everything checked out. Huh? Everything checked out perfect. Well, if you're going to fly around the world, I want to be sure you go first class. Oh, well, you can take it easy now, because day after tomorrow is the big day, and we are in under the water. Well, I still want to run through another complete check before you go. Douglas, relax. This calls for a celebration. Fine. How about the dinner time? Well, I'm sure that you'll have more facts and figures prepared for dessert, but I'll take you up on it. Only not at the hotel. I have been longing for a home-cooked meal. Oh. All right, uh, we'll make it in my house, eh? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> you can introduce me to my family. <laughs> Put the olives in the dish, will you? All right, Charlie. I've asked people out here to have dinner before without giving you much advance notice, and you didn't get so upset. Well, it just shows you. You can't take a mean old grouch for granted. Well, you like Trudy, Charlie. She's just a plain, everyday girl. Sure. Who just happens to be flying around the world solo. <laughs> Why didn't you take her for a hamburger or something? Charlie, this isn't like you. I know. It's just that I'm all unnerved by that joker painting a picture of me. And I don't know who or how or when or anything. Oh, well, there she is. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Charlie. Trudy's taking off in a couple of days, and after she leaves, I'll try to help you solve the mystery, okay? Sure. Dad told us you flew a traffic helicopter. Once, I had substituted for the pilot who'd broken his arm. Well, I ran out of gas and had to land on the freeway, and there I was reporting my own traffic jam. <laughs> oh, boy. Tell me, what did it feel like when you first soloed? Well, it really didn't feel like much of anything until after I'd landed. 
And then suddenly I was able to say those three magic words to myself. I can fly. <laughs> well, after your trip around the world, where is there left to go? You know, Rob, I hadn't thought of that. Well, you could be a lady astronaut, go to the moon, couldn't you? Yes. Fellas, this is beginning to sound a little like a press conference. Oh, I don't mind, really. They make me feel at home. Anybody like a little hot coffee? Oh, Charlie, I want to thank you so much for that wonderful dinner. It was heavenly, but I just have one favor to ask. Sure, anything. Would you make some sandwiches for me to take on the flight? <laughs> I'd be glad to. Oh, boy, Uncle Charlie's going to be an air hostess. Well, it'll be the farthest my bologna sandwiches have ever been away from home. <laughs> Oh, Douglas. I've forgotten what an evening at home could be like. You certainly made a hit with the boys and Charlie. Must be my new perfume. Flight fuel number five. <laughs> Just because you happen to be a pilot, don't uh, underestimate your talents as a woman. You know, Douglas, for the first time, I find myself wondering what life could be like with both feet on the ground. I think I've been missing something. Well, didn't you tell me you were born with wings? Douglas, when I get back from my flight, will I see you again? Oh, sure. Yeah, my uh, assignment isn't over until I get a full report on the ladybug. Let her take off without so much fuss. She's going to break a speed record. She's sure holding things up. Thank you. Oh, I'm sure it's a lot. I'll be right back, fellas. I was afraid you weren't coming. Well, we wouldn't have missed it. Uncle Charlie, sandwiches. Sandwiches? Oh, oh, yeah. Here's the sandwiches. Oh, thank you, Charlie. Thank you. I've got some for you, too. Well, thank you, too, Chief. A rabbit's foot. Oh, thanks. Well, I guess this is it. Well, come on. I'll tuck you in. Bye. 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 safely in a round-the-world effort. In a moment, hey, a report on the so weather. far, so good, huh? Yeah. That's because Dad did such a good job with her plane. And also, she has my rabbit's foot. Well, thanks for giving me first billing, Chipper. <laughs> sure, planes he can fix up. But a simple little matter, like finding out who insulted me in oil. <laughs> Way, Mr. O'Casey. I didn't want to tell you I was painting you, because then you'd be more natural, if you know what I mean. But why did you have to make it such a big secret afterward? Well, I, I just didn't want the other guys down at the company to know. I, I mean, they all go bowling on their spare time and, and shooting pool and fishing and things like that. You know what I mean? I, I just couldn't spill it to them that, well, it's painting I like. 
Well, you just keep on with your painting. And any time you want me to model for you... <laughs> Thank you, Mr. O'Casey. Gee, you just been swell about this whole thing. Now, how about a glass of milk? No, thank you. I never touch that stuff. <laughs> That's the distance she covered yesterday. Sure is a good thing the world is round. How come? Because a plane can't make right angle turns. <laughs> Come on, you guys. She'll be all right. Yeah, I'm sure she will. She's a competent pilot. And she's got Chip's lucky rabbit's foot. Chipper, I guess it's your turn. Isn't it? Thank you for what we were about to receive. It. Dad, can I say something about Trudy? Sure, Chip. That'd be nice. And please give Trudy Bennett a safe landing. Roger and out. Yeah. Well, I was talking about a pilot, wasn't it? Uh, hello? Mr. Steve Douglas? Yes, sir. This is WQQR4. I'm a ham radio operator in Honolulu, and uh, I've just received a radio message for you. Yes, well, go on, WQQR4. It's from Trudy Bennett. You heard from her? Uh, I've got her on the air right now. She had to make a forced landing on New Guinea. Uh, I, I ask her what happened. He says, what happened? My radio's out. But that's the least of my worries. There's a leak in the oil line. She says her radio's out, but that's okay. She says she has a leak in her oil line. Oh. Well, ask her if there's anybody there who could fix it. He says, is there anyone there who can help you fix it? Tell him no. I'm on an old emergency airstrip left over from the war. Nobody here but us New Guinea natives and a ham radio operator. Well, he can fix the radio, but not the oil line. She says there's no one there who can help her fix it. Ask her if she has any nail polish. Nail polish? Yeah, you know, nail polish. He says, do you have any nail polish? Nail polish? <laughs> yeah, you know, nail polish. <laughs> Why, I wouldn't be caught dead in the New Guinea jungle without it. Then you don't have any. As a matter of fact, I do. She says she's got some. Good. And let's cut out the she says stuff, huh? Now tell her to get some adhesive tape out of her first aid kit. Wrap it around the leak. Then take the nail polish and coat it over and over again till there's a good thick shell. That ought to hold her if she gets to her next stop. Miss Bennett, get an adhesive from your first aid kit. Wrap it around the leak in the line and then keep applying the polish until it makes a good hard shell, okay? Okay, I'm on my way. And tell him he's a doll. You're a doll. What? Well, he said to get out the she says business. Oh, <laughs> thanks W2QR4, you're a doll too. <laughs> Good night, fellas. Good
I couldn't have broken that record without your help, Steve. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Um, the sponsors are already after me to uh, make another trip. Oh? Yeah, over the pole. Over the pole? I'd be the first woman. And you'll do it, too. Offers have been coming in all afternoon to, uh, oh, test new planes and make speeches and write some articles. I even have a chance to, uh, bring out my own line of ladies' flying apparel. They, uh, they want to call the company Ladybug Incorporated. Yeah. You'll be the first incorporated ladybug I've ever known. <laughs> but you know, it's a, it's a funny thing, Steve. You, uh, you spend your whole life working towards one goal. And then when you reach it, you wonder if it's what you really wanted. Does that make any sense? Oh, sure. Sure, I guess so. Maybe it's time I, uh... I stopped being Trudy Bennett, girl aviator. Maybe with a, a little help, I could be Trudy Bennett, girl woman. Trudy, do you think you could give up, uh, well, everything you have now? I mean, could you exchange an instrument panel with turn and bank indicators and a fuel gauge and an altimeter? For a kitchen with a refrigerator and a stove and a washing machine. I mean, would you really be happy? I guess not. Well, if I'm uh, going to take the ladybug over the pole, I'll be needing some more of that expert advice. For copy, yeah. You hungry? Oh, oh I'm starved. dropped by Eames Galleries yesterday to take a look at the picture, and they uh, told me it had been sold. Yeah, I know. I, uh, I wonder who. <laughs> I think it would look good over the fireplace, don't you? Well, uh, why don't we talk about it, Charlie? <laughs> in 15 minutes. And if he can't talk to you in 15 minutes, what makes you think he can talk to you in 20? Okay, give me the message. All right, I'll tell him you're a lizard croak. Charlie, got my tickets. Looks like I'm going to finally make it to Hawaii. What's so great about Hawaii? I put in there once on a Molly O during a beer shorty. Well, Charlie, you were the one that said I should go there. You're the one that said I ought to go by boat, that I should go alone. If it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't have thought of going. Yeah, well, you go anyway. What do you mean, go anyway? I mean, uh, you shouldn't let anything stop you. You need the rest and the romance and all that solitary stuff. Well, you go anyway. Charlie, what's going on? He's okay, right, Doc? Uh, it looks like it, but we'll have to watch him for a couple of days. Watch who for what? Well, Chip has a bronchial infection. Sort of thing we used to call a heavy chest. But we've had a case of two turning in pneumonia. As I say, we'll keep an eye on him, but I'm sure he'll be fine. Boy, 
That's a relief. I thought he was really... Hey, what are you doing? Uh, what do we do for him, Doctor? Keep him warm, plenty of liquids. Have this filled out and give it to him every four hours. Sure. Uh, may I speak to Mr. Willis, please? <laughs> Doc, tell him he don't have to cancel any vacation. All right, I'll hang on. Really, Steve, you don't have to cancel your trip. I'm sure the chip will be right as rain in a day or two. Steve, quit being a mother hen. Doc, just don't stand there. He's canceling. You're the same as telling me I'm a rotten mother. Hey, Mr. Willis, this is Stephen Douglas. Sir, I'm going to have to cancel my reservations. Yes, Mr. Willis, uh, something went awry. <laughs> I, I don't know when I'll be able to do it now. No, maybe next year. But thanks very much. Steve, we can handle it. Me and the doctor have seen the sniffles before. Really, Steve, we... Steve, get on that phone and call I carried the back. Have a glass of milk each. The cake is for dinner. And don't throw your mitts on the table. <laughs> Rob? Oh, hi, Dad. Hi. Be out here again, huh? Yeah, I'm getting a little sun and reading. Oh. Incidentally, Rob, uh, your brakes and my nerves would last a lot longer if you'd stop using the driveway as a test area. <laughs> okay, Dad. Uh, Dad, uh, you all right? I mean, you want me to get you anything? No, 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 thanks. I'm fine. Get a half a glass of milk and the cake is for dinner. And don't slam your books down on the table. <laughs> Poor Dad. Don't look at me as if I'm a crook or something. It's not my fault if I got sick. I'm not looking at you. I just wish you could have a better vacation than sitting out in the backyard and reading a book. Hi, Dad. Oh, hi, Mike. You, uh, you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, why? Nothing. Get a half a glass of milk and the cake is for dinner. Now, if you have any books, you can throw them on the table. Boy, we gotta do something to entertain Dad on his vacation. Dad, I only have a few days in Hawaii, even if he flew both ways. What's so great about going to Hawaii on a boat? I'll tell you what's so great about it, mate. By now, Steve had had himself a nice suntan from splashing around in the pool on the after deck. He'd be landed and some beautiful Polynesian-type doll would have thrown one of those flowered necklaces around his neck and kissed him. And he'd be going to a luau with one of the teachers he met on board. Teachers? What are teachers doing in a neat place like a wife? Teachers do more traveling than Marco Polo. Hey! Yeah, that's a neat idea. How do you know what it is? Well, I don't, but I'll go for anything that'll get Dad out of the backyard. Norman, how many of these prop palm trees do you have? Well, just three. Uh, we use them as an oasis in Bojest and as an atoll in South Pacific. They're perfect. Hey, Mike, this stuff's not supposed to leave the campus. Well, suppose I could get Miss Lovett's permission. I don't know, Mike. She's pretty fussy about stuff leaving the stage, never mind the campus. Who's fussy about what? Oh, well, uh, it's kind of weird, but I'll, I'll make it quick. My father was going to Hawaii, but he couldn't. So our families decided to sort of bring Hawaii to him. I think that's a lovely idea. Take the whole forest. <laughs> oh, thank you. Great. You're going to have a whole luau and everything? Yeah. My Uncle Charlie's going to bury the pig in the backyard. <laughs> We're going to have guitar music and sing around a rock fire. We'll have everything but the school teacher. A school teacher? Oh, well, we figured my father would have met one on the ship by now. Oh. Would you like to come? Who, me? Well, I know it's kind of silly, but... Gee, it wouldn't be much fun for Dad with just us guys. No, I, I, I guess it's a stupid idea. Oh, I don't know. I, I should really be there to keep an eye on my palm trees. Oh, that's <laughs> terrific. Uh, Marcia, when is Miss Drake coming out? What do you want to see a girl's gym teacher for? Well, I, uh, 
Who's planning on taking a figure dance? <laughs> okay. When's she coming out? Pretty soon. She's getting all gussied up as if everybody didn't know she's just going straight home. <laughs> Miss Drake? Yes? I'm Robbie Douglas. I'm the fellow who fell down the stairs when I was helping carry the risers for the basketball game that time. Oh, yes, Robbie. Uh, how's your knee? Oh, it's uh, all scarred over better than new. <laughs> Miss Drake, I have something kind of weird to ask you. Why don't I walk you to your car? Go ahead and ask her. I just remembered. Her name is Mrs. Gavin. That means she's already married to some guy. Yeah, only not anymore. He was in one of those old-timers' wars they used to have. <laughs> oh, yes, boys. Chip's the one that wants to see him, Mrs. Gavin. I'm only waiting for him. <laughs> what is it, Chip? Uh, do you want to go to a Lulu, Mrs. Gavin? <laughs> <laughs> he means Lua. He's nervous. <laughs> But what kind of a luau, Chip? Well, my dad was supposed to go to Hawaii. Only I got sick, so he didn't. Only I got better too quick, and I wrecked his plans. So we're giving him a luau. And they want teachers for some reason. She always meet teachers on a ship. <laughs> and you're a teacher. And it's a surprise for my dad. So don't tell too many people. Except maybe your mother, so she'll know where you are. <laughs> Thank you, Chip. I'd be delighted to come. Boy, thanks, Mrs. Gavin. <laughs> OK, now I'll go down to the market tomorrow and get the pig. Now, you two big guys dig me a hole in the backyard about, oh, yay round. And Chip, you heat me some stones and see if you can find me some big leaves to wrap the fruit and the bananas and the stuff in. Is that your dad? Ah, uh -uh, he fell asleep in the easy chair. Now remember, you guys, this is supposed to be a surprise. Don't tell anybody, especially Ernie, Chip. Well, I have to tell Ernie. I already invited him. What are you guys doing, selling tickets? <laughs> I got it. You think he heard us? Oh. Hello. Oh, hi, Joe. Steve, I know this is a spur of the moment thing, but Will Corbett and I are going up the mountains fishing tomorrow. We thought you might like to come along. Well, I, uh, I'm not doing anything around here, just uh, sitting around taking it easy. Well, good. Uh, Will's having a little trouble with his wife about being away for three days, so uh, I'll have to call you back later and let you know what time we'll pick you up. Fine, let me know. I'll be ready. Okay. Talking. Now, you guys hit the sack early tonight because you got a lot of work to do tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Boy's dad's gonna be surprised. Yeah. I'll call up Bernie and we can get some rocks. Listen, I don't know whether there's an empty lot. And those beans, how big do you want them? Hello. 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 Oh, hi, Joe. Did uh, Will work it out with his wife so he can go fishing with us tomorrow? Yeah, he made it all right. We'll pick you up at 3 o'clock. Good. 3 o'clock. Yeah. Now, if we leave at 3, we ought to be on the screen by 8, huh? Fine, I'll see you. Wait a minute, Joe. I, I better meet you out in front of the house. I don't want to wake up the whole joint here. Good. I'll see you. Uh, Steve, I, I couldn't help you in your conversation, but uh, you, uh, you can't go fishing tomorrow. Why not, Charlie? We'll only be gone two or three days. I know, but... Uh, well, uh, you go anyway. Now, wait a minute. There you go again. <laughs> what do you mean, you go anyway? Well, you gave up one trip for the boys. No sense letting them foul things up twice. Or is one of the boys sick again or something? No, but the kids couldn't stand it to see you sitting out reading and taking naps and stuff like that. So, uh, well, uh, you go anyway. Charlie, what do the boys do? <laughs> Nothing yet. Uh, they're doing it tomorrow night. What are they doing? Well, it's a surprise. They knocked their brains out planning it, and they collected a lot of stuff, and they gave up their allowances, and... Uh, but look, 
You go anyway, because <laughs> this thing isn't going to be any world okay, fair Charlie, or anything. Okay, okay, okay. Quit talking. Now I'm liable to say something corny. Mm -hmm. Joe, Joe, this is Steve. Say, I'm going to uh, have to back out of the fishing trip. Yeah, yeah, I know. No, no, nothing's wrong with the kids or anything. No. Well, it's just that uh, I'll tell you when I see you. Catch a couple of fish for me, huh? Okay, Joe. if he suspects something. Well, I bet he doesn't suspect what he's gonna get. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Boy, you're sure getting hot. Hey, I just got an idea. What? How are we gonna get these things out to the hole? Maybe we could. Nah, that's dumb. I was gonna say, maybe we could cool them off first. <laughs> yeah, that is dumb. Come on, you guys, put it on the table. Did you get the rocks nice and hot? Yeah, but how are we gonna get them out to the hole? Oh, we'll cool them off. <laughs> Charlie, did you get a pig? I did better than that. I got a 12-pound ham and 50 pork chops. <laughs> Don't just stand there. Go out there and get the rest of the supplies. So worried he was a cook on board all those ships. I know that. Something tells me he has very little experience with holes in the ground. Chip? Yeah? You feel kind of dumb in this outfit? Yeah. I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> Second day out, Charlie. Yeah, but it does get a little choppy on the Pacific this time of the year. <laughs> what do you oh, think of that? Fresh yeah. pineapple. Yeah, yeah. Here, yeah. Myself, I oh, sir. Oh, thank you, Chick. Mm. <laughs> hey, go get the <laughs> coconut. Oh. Don't forget the pineapple nice. bandits. Mm. Wonderful. Charlie, mm. I'm glad you taught me out of that fishing trip. I wouldn't have missed this for the world. Well, okay, thanks. come on. I saw the show down the hula. <laughs> all right, not all right. Watch this. Come on. <laughs> Doorbell. 
Oh. You uh, expecting somebody else? <laughs> Chip. Ah, that'll be a lady. Will you bring her back here? How'd you know? How did he know what? <laughs> huh? Nothing. <laughs> Well, I might as well see if the dinner is done. Hey, uh, what are you cooking in there, Charlie? Pork chops. Oh, how can you tell when they're done? How do you think I can tell? When they yell, oink, oink. <laughs> Why, how, how lovely. Come on, Miss Gavin. Dad, this is your teacher. My what? The teacher? He said he'd meet a teacher if he went to Hawaii. This is her, Mr. Douglas. Oh. I'm Mrs. Gavin. Well, how do you do, Mrs. Gavin? I must admit that I was a little bit confused myself. But the boys were so insistent. <laughs> Hello, hi, Mrs. Gavin. Hello, oh, uh, how are you? Mrs. Gavin. Uh, I don't want to leave Sally. Will you just bring her back here, please? Huh? Pull her. The school teacher. Well, how did you know? This is the boy's granddaughter. Just answer the door, will you? <laughs> You see, Mrs. Gavin, I actually was going to take a trip to Hawaii, and uh, I think maybe somebody mentioned to the boys that I uh, might meet a teacher on the trip. She's a real neat teacher, too. She hardly ever flunks anybody. <laughs> Thank you, Ernest. Oh, I was extremely flattered when the boys invited me to come. Well, I'm glad you came, Mrs. Gavin. Uh, this is it. Oh, this is marvelous. Well, come on. Dad? This is Miss Drake. I guess she's a teacher, too. She is? <laughs> How do you do, Miss Drake? I suppose I had the same idea as Chip. <laughs> well, uh, Miss Drake, this is uh, Mrs. Gavin, and uh, this How is the boy's uh, great uncle, uh, Charlie O'Casey. <laughs> now, uh, don't tell me. Yeah, Dad, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> she teaches girls gym, Dad. Oh, is that so? They're doing everything nowadays to stop dropouts. <laughs> you know, it kind of gets my back just to watch it. <laughs> No, actually, there's a very simple step to that same rhythm. Oh. Well, I, I think I'd better sit this one. Oh, now, Steve, you. now, just imagine. Now, you're on your trip, you're on the ship, and it's the first night out. Now, you and I have just met, and uh, we're sitting in the ballroom. And I asked you to dance. Hmm? Oh, would you care to dance? I'd love it. Uh, nothing quite that big. All right. You thought of everything, even a tropical shower. This rain will drown my poor chop. Well, don't worry about that, Charlie. We'll eat fish and poi. <laughs> anyway, if the rain lets up a little, we can move everything inside, huh? Yeah. Okay? Come on, yeah. let's sing! Yeah. Aloha, Aloha. Well, fellas, it was quite a luau. Boy, Dad, we sure fouled up the details, didn't we? Oh, Rob, you couldn't know it was going to rain. Yeah, but we should have checked with each other about the teachers. I guess you felt pretty bad when all three of them showed up. <laughs> yeah, and Uncle Charlie wrecked the food by putting it in the ground where the water could get to it. And those chickens we had to go out and buy tasted like rubber. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. I came up to tell you fellas I'd never had a better time in my life, and you're trying to talk me out of it. No kidding. No kidding. I just told Mike and Charlie, I'm glad I didn't go to Hawaii. This was a lot better. Well, I've got to go and press these in my memory book. You fellas better get to sleep, huh? Night. Good night. Night. Night, Dad. Thanks again. Do you think you really had a good time, Rob? No. 
dads have to say things like that? Well, I think he had a good time. Well, yeah, maybe. Well, go to sleep, Chip. Why, if it wasn't for me, he would have had a rotten time. Are you kidding? Who burned in the palm trees and who played the guitar and who strung up the lights and stuff? Uncle Charlie, Mike, and I. Yeah. But I'm the one who got sick. <laughs> Good night, Chip. be shaving for another year or so. Not the way it's gone already. I got a date this afternoon with a real old girl. Hey, uh, who is she? Well, her name's Eloise Patterson. Oh, Tim Patterson's kid sister? Kid? She's a teenager. Eloise is a teenager? Yeah, she was 13 yesterday. <laughs> Boy, this stuff stinks. Do I smell older? <laughs> yes. How'd you happen to meet an old girl like that? Well, I bumped into her and knocked all her books down. And yesterday, I held the water faucet for her. I got it all over her face. It was really funny. And that's uh, how it happened, huh? Yeah. She said she'd be at the malt shop today after school. Maybe I ought to grow some sideburns. No, that's out, Chip. Uh, beards are coming in now. No kidding. <laughs> like well, he thinks she's really tough. Tough? Yeah, you know, the best. Great. Oh, I thought maybe she was a lady wrestler or something. <laughs> oh, Dad. <laughs> it could happen these days. Oh, Charlie, I forgot to tell you, I'm eating dinner at Sally's tonight. Tell her not to slice the meat too thick for the stroganoff. Hey, how did you know she's making stroganoff? She called here for my recipe. Oh. Are you ready, Dad? Well, be within a minute. Okay, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll get the car up. Good. Oh, boy, pancakes! Oh, hello, Hi. Shepard. See, I, uh, here you have a date with little uh, Eloise Patterson. Little? Dad, she's 13. Oh. Yeah, I have to act like a teenager, and I don't know how to. Good. Let's keep it that way. Well, I'll tell you what you do, Chip. You ask Robbie about it. See you later. Bye, Bye now. <laughs> Rob, well, first, can I borrow your pants? Before, they'd be too big. Well, I'll cut them off the knees like I see some of the big guys wearing. Not my pants. Anyway, only the kids who are far off do that. Well, what about tennis shoes? Fine, just don't have them too clean. That'll never be a problem. Rob, what do I say to an older girl? Well, a teenage girl likes to hear about herself. Tell her how pretty she is. Yeah, I'm going to get sick or something right there in the mall shop. <laughs> All women like good manners, Chip. You know, like uh, helping them out of a car and pulling back their chairs, stuff like that. No kidding. You mean I got to do all that junk? Well, you can't go around pushing them out of your way. Boy, this is going to be a mess. Can I tell her what to order? No, you let a girl order what she wants. Well, suppose she orders everything in the whole place. Then you don't see her again. Here's your milk. And another thing, teenagers always act like they've been around. Around where? Just around. You know, brag about all your other dates. I've never had a date with a teenage girl before. Well, make it up. Being a teenager is a new world, Chip. Oh, I gotta go. Good pancake, Mr. Jordan. Thanks. Better get going, Chip. Better get to school while you can still make it without a cane. <laughs> Come on. I'll see you later, Uncle Charlie. Right. <laughs> Be your assignment for tomorrow. We uh, have a few minutes before the bell to discuss the homecoming parade float. Any suggestions? Hmm. 
Barney? How about an astronaut sitting on a rocket going to the moon? Oh. Oh. I thought we were going to come up with something different for a change. Pete? Maybe we could have hula girls. Oh, brother. Now, that is untough. I'd have to agree with Robbie. We did that one when I was in high school. Yeah, but we'll use different girls. <laughs> well, the girls may be new, but the theme won't be. Uh, Harry? Why don't we have a giant dragon with its head moving from side to side? Harry, we can see that every Chinese New Year. All right, then. Since Robbie is so critical, let's make him chairman of a committee to come up with an idea. Yeah! <laughs> didn't mean that I could come up with any better ideas. I just... <laughs> you mean you can't play with me on account of some goofy girl? Well, us teenage guys have to quit playing around with kids. I wouldn't be taking Eloise Patterson to the malt shop if I was still a kid. Sounds kind of scary. No, Robbie told me all about how to act like a teenager. Want me to come in with you for a little while? Uh-uh. I have to put on my dirty tennis shoes. Robbie's surfer shirt. You just won't be seeing much of you anymore. I guess not. Okay. Bye, Chip. Bye. We'll be friends again as soon as you get to be a teenager. Okay, see you then. Been waiting long? Yeah, 15 or 20 minutes. It was such a problem deciding what to wear. Now that I'm 13, it makes a difference. Yeah, I can tell. How can you? You got gobs of lipstick on. Hi, Rob. You sit here? Wait a minute. Sitting way up there for. You're supposed to push me up to the table. Hey, no kidding? Well, Uncle Charlie didn't say anything about that. <laughs> Boy, you're heavy. How old are you, Chip? I'm going on 13. You're so young. It's okay. My brother told me how to act. This is the toughest, Chip. Yeah. All us teenagers hang out here. You've been here before? Yeah. I come here lots of times to tell my brother Robbie Uncle Charlie's looking for him. You better get home quick before he gets yelled at. Okay, kids, what do you have? Root beer and a hamburger. Double malted and a giant hamburger. <laughs> my sister told me not to order much when I'm on a date with a boy. Otherwise, I would have had pie, too. <laughs> Hi, Chip. Hi, Ralph. Guys, this is Eloise. Eloise is my brother, Robbie, Pete, and Barney. How do you do? Hi. Hi. Well, won't you join us? We can get some extra chairs, can't we, Chip? Yeah. Uh, sorry, Eloise. We've got some important business. We'll see you around. I certainly hope so. <laughs> Robbie's so cute. Yeah, but he's real old. Seventeen. I like Pete, too. Also, Barney. Eloise, I thought you wanted to be here with me. I do, Chip. But my sister said a girl has to be a real operator. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it. Yeah? And pick the six prettiest girls in the senior class. Hey, now that I crave already. <laughs> I'll do the picking. And we put them in bathing suits. And? Yeah, we put them on the float. Yeah. Go on. What do you mean, go on? That's it. You gotta be kidding. I thought you were supposed to come up with something different. Well, what's different about girls in bathing suits? <laughs> okay. So we didn't hit it. Yeah. <laughs> Do the 
Watusi. The Wahoo? The Watusi. It's a dam. Is that what they're doing? Uh-huh. Looks like they got ants crawling all over them. All I know is social dancing. You know, one, two, three, four. I don't think I could ever marry a boy who couldn't do the Watusi. <laughs> Eloise, would it be okay if I went outside and talked to my brother for a minute? I've got something important to ask. Sure. Hey, I heard you asked that kid if he could do the Watusi. Uh-huh. Can you do it? Sure. Can you? Try me. Hey, Rob. Can I borrow a dollar? That Eloise sure eats a lot. Yeah, sure. Here. Rob, can you teach me the Watusi? Here? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Well, thanks. <laughs> Chip here? Oh, no, he's not home yet. I saw him with Eloise at the mall shop. <laughs> How was he doing? Well, he had to borrow a dollar from me because Eloise ate so much. <laughs> I could have to get him a credit card, huh? Uh, Dad, have you got any ideas for a school homecoming float? Float? Well, what kind of a float? Root beer? <laughs> I criticized what the other kids suggested, so they made me chairman of the float for the homecoming parade, and I'm trying to come up with something different. Mm. How does a float with six girls in bathing suits hit you? I'll take root beer. <laughs> Uh, six girls in dating suits, all right? You know, that doesn't sound like a particularly novel idea. Yeah, I know, Dad. Have you got any suggestions? Well, let's see. I remember once when I was in college, I was uh, chairman of the decorating committee for our fraternity. <laughs> we fellas got together and we... <laughs> well, what was it, Dad? Maybe I can use it. Uh, they brought it up in the yearbook. Anyway, we fellas got together and... <laughs> <laughs> Well, come on, Dad. You know, now that I think of it, it uh, well, it was pretty silly. <laughs> Hi, Chip. Hi. Hi, Chipper. Well, how'd everything go today? Eloise left me to dance with some older guy. Oh, boy, that was a dirty trick. Some big guy who could dance that stupid new dance they're doing. Did she ask you first? I went outside to borrow a dollar for Robbie on a kind of sheet like a horse. When I got back, she was with this big guy. No, oh, did you just stand there and uh, watch them all this time? No, some big guys made fun of me, so I left. Well, I wish I'd have been there then. Then I went over to Ernie's to tell him that I'd be able to play with him tomorrow. Then I just walked around for a while. Dad, I don't feel so good. Okay, you guys. How about dinner before my rack of lamb gets too wrecked? Uncle Charlie, I'm not hungry, excuse me. Not hungry. He's sick or something? No, uh, Eloise dropped him for an older man. Mm. I wasn't afraid of that. These May December affairs never work out. <laughs> Charlie, uh, hold dinner for a few minutes, will you? Okay. Bikinis. <laughs> Chip? Oh. Chip, but don't feel too bad about what happened today. Yeah, but after I paid for a giant hamburger and a double malt, Dad, she's a real teenager. She eats as much as Robbie does. You know something, Chip? The same thing happened to me when I was about your age. No kidding? Yeah. 
I took this older girl. She must have been at least six months older than I was. Anyway, I took her to a carnival, and she wound up riding the Ferris wheel all afternoon with a much older boy. What'd you do? Well, I, I finally left her there with him and went home. Boy, that really hurt. I was sure I'd never get over it as long as I lived. What was her name? I don't remember, Chip. Well, how come? I thought you said you'd never get over it. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to point out to you, Chip. What happened today with Eloise uh, seems very important to you now, but when you get older, you won't even remember Eloise's name. I won't, huh? How about that? It's kind of a clunky name anyway. And when you get to be a teenager, I mean a real teenager, you won't even remember this. You'll be so busy dating other girls. Like who, Dad? Oh, I don't know who, Chip, but uh, there'll be a lot of girls. Because by dating different girls, a fellow finds out what kind of girl he wants to marry. Does that make sense? I guess so. Well, what do you say we get out and get some dinner? Okay. What if I see Eloise in school? Oh, well, be nice to her. Be polite, but uh, don't ask her for any more dates. Okay, Dad, I'll forget her. Grab the phone, Chip. Tell her, I'll call him back later. Tell her yourself, it's Eloise. Eloise? Hey, Chip, I thought you... Okay, if you want to. But none of that giant hamburger and double malt stuff. I'm in Hawk now. Okay, bye. Hey, Dad, that was Eloise. Oh. Well, she called me and asked me for a date tomorrow. Guess she really liked me, huh? Well, I don't suppose she would have called you otherwise, Chip. Or maybe she got hungry again. <laughs> Did that girl you left on the Ferris wheel call you back for a date, Dad? No, she didn't, Chip. Yahoo! <laughs> what girl on what Ferris wheel, Dad? Oh, I told you about her, right? You did? Yeah, when you were about Chip's age. Oh. You know, Rob, I went through the teenage bit, first with Mike and then with you, but the uh, thought of going through it a third time frightens me just a little. Mr. Douglas? No, he isn't home. Anything I can do for you? I'm Mrs. Thomas, Barney's mother, and you can tell Mr. Douglas I think Robbie's idea is shameful. What's the matter with Robbie's idea? Yeah boy suggesting something like that for the homecoming float. Well, it's disgraceful. Are you talking about those six girls he's going to put in bathing suits? Well, then Mr. Douglas did know about it. Sure, Robbie told us about it last night. We got no secrets around here. And Mr. Douglas approves? Haven't you read the morning paper? <clears throat> no, I, 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 I've been busy with my housework. Well, read it. Some of the other mothers will be calling you, I'm sure. What's wrong having pretty girls in bathing suits? Topless suits? Every parade has... <laughs> Topless! <laughs> Steve, this is Charlie. We got an emergency here. Uh, what kind of emergency do you have this time, Charlie? I'm not kidding. It's right here in the paper. Announced Topless Bathing Suit Homecoming Float Theme. And right off the bat, it mentions Robbie's name. Robert Douglas, senior at Bright Park High School, announced that the theme for the homecoming float this afternoon would be the new topless bathing suit. Topless? <laughs> Johnny, it's got to be some kind of a joke. Then you better attend the next PTA meeting and laugh it up. The ladies have already started complaining. Charlie, I have every confidence in Robbie's good taste, and you can tell that to anybody else who comes around. I'll try to get home early. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a float with girls with topless... <laughs> I can remember when I was in school, we, uh... <laughs> Nothing like that. <laughs> Ouch! I thought that guy you were dancing with yesterday was really goofy looking. He was not. You mean you liked him? I thought he was tough. Well, I thought you thought I was tough. Chip, I'm afraid you're too young for me. What'd you call me up for? To say goodbye. Oh. And to apologize. For what? Because I left you alone yesterday. Yeah, I did feel kind of dumb hanging around while you were doing that silly dance. My mother told me to say something else, too. What? I want you to know that I'll always remember our friendship as one of the nicest things in my childhood. Tell your mother I said thanks. Hi, Eloise. Hi, Fred. This is Chip. Hi, kid. Hi. Hi, Eloise. Bye, Chip. You look real tough today. Oh, 
I'm home. And I'm mighty glad you're home. That phone has been ringing all day long. Now you can take care of the beefs about that topless float. Charlie, did you uh, tell them all that I trust Robbie? Yeah, but they don't trust you. They all wonder what kind of a parent you are. Oh. You know, Charlie, that bugs me. Everybody presumes teenagers are guilty without even hearing their side of the story. Now, I just know Robbie wouldn't be a part of anything like that. Hi, Dad. Home early, aren't you? Yeah, a little. Uh, did you have your date with Eloise? Yeah, she just wanted to say goodbye. Oh. Where's she going? No place. She said she's too old for me. And she ought to date older guys, like that weirdo Fred she was dancing with yesterday. How are you taking it, Chip? Okay? Yeah. I got to thinking about what you told me last night. About how I'd be going out with lots of girls. Wouldn't even remember Eloise's name. That's right, Chip. Well, so far, I still remember. Oh, we'll give it time. Okay. Well, I guess I'll go upstairs and take off these stupid clothes and get into my own stuff so I can play with Ernie. I got six months and two weeks to fool around in before I go out with teenage girls. <laughs> All right. Hi, Chipper. Hi, Mike. Hi, Dad. Hi, Charlie. Hey, did you hear about Robbie's float? Hear about it? They've been beating my eardrums about it all day. Uh, how'd you know about it, Mike? Sally called to tell me. She saw the float and said it was wonderful. <laughs> Imagine that. Topless bathing suits. Uh, Sally said it was wonderful? Yeah. She said everyone's laughing about it. Hi, Dan. Hi, Mr. Douglas. Hello, Hi, Charlie. Okay, Mike. Hey, did you hear about our float? It was great. Bob deserves all the credit, Mr. Douglas. He came up with the idea. <laughs> okay, Rob. What's with these topless bathing suits? Where are the girls? Girls? <laughs> Show him, Pete. Pete was one of the six guys on our float. Six guys? Mm -hmm. Ta-da! <laughs> Those topless suits. <laughs> oh, what a great idea, Ron. Well, I got it from Dad. From me? Yeah. I was going to use girls in bikinis, but then I saw in your yearbook where you came up with a shapely leg contest for boys. <laughs> well, I told you that was pretty silly, Ron. <laughs> Dad, when I get to be your age, I guess I'll think this was pretty silly, too. <laughs> <laughs>